Buzz, I told you, I can't do any more Speedmaster videos. We've done so many fucking Speedmaster videos. I mean, it can't be the Buzz Aldrin fucking Speedmaster show, okay? It's not, what do you mean? Well, fuck you, I don't wanna go to your birthday party, all right? I, I don't give a shit, whatever. I can't do any more goddamn Speedmaster videos. All right, well, that's it. Hey guys, it is Cam from Craft and Tailored, and in this episode of What Is On My Wrist, we're talking about a pretty interesting sub that we recently acquired. It's from 1978, the reference is 1680, and we've done a couple of videos on red submariners, we've done videos on double red subs, or sea dwellers rather, um, but we haven't done one on um, a white 1680. So we've got a good one. I like white 1680s and um, let's talk about it. This is an incredible example and I'm excited to share it with you. So when the 1680, the reference 1680, and mind you, David, who, David is our editor, by the way. I talk to him through these videos. I'm like, hey David, put this in. That's so you guys know. David, I love you. Thank you for putting up with all my shit. My shit, my shit, my shit. Um, and making me look, but, halfway decent on these videos. Uh, mm. When the 1680, the reference 1680 was introduced in 1969, basically every 1680 until um, 1975 had what is referred to as, as it's a red sub. Okay, so from 69 to 75, every 1680 reference had red lettering for Submariner, okay? Let's talk about this uh, 1680 from 1978. So um, towards the end-ish of production for the 1680, um, basically if, as we move into the into the triple zero and into the double zero, so the 168000 and the 16800, um, the biggest difference is uh, hacking date, so a quick set date, and a uh, mineral glass, or rather sapphire crystal, upgraded movement, but essentially it's the same watch. One just has sapphire crystal and a quick set date. Um, this one does not. Um, this example, I'm just over the moon with. Uh, it's a very original example. I like finding watches that have a great patina, but are also in kind of a found and uh, original condition. Um, the case on this, in my professional opinion, um, it, it remains unpolished. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about, and maybe we can do a video on this later, what's an unpolished watch look, look like? What's a polished watch look like? One of the things that I look at is the bottom side of the case, okay? Most people are like looking at a watch like this, they're looking at a watch like this, they get a loop and they're like, like getting in there. And I'm like, number one, when you look at a watch, hold it, hold it about 24 inches away from your eyeballs. Look at it like this. Does the watch look good? Do you even like the watch? Does the patina speak to you? Does the insert speak to you? You know, does does the thing feel right? You know, there's like a lot of guys that are just like getting up into stuff and I'm like, you do you even know what you're looking at? You're just looping shit, you know? So look at the watch, does it look nice, right? Is everything symmetrical? The other thing that I do is most people look at like top side or look at these chamfers here, right? Um, what I actually look at first is the bottom side of the case. Okay, so I look at this edge here and I run my finger along it. And if it's sharp, you know, not sharp to like where it's gonna cut your finger, but if it's if there's like a definitive edge there, to me that's an indicator number one of, of the case being unpolished is the underside of the lug. The second thing I look at is where the lug hole is in, rel in relation to the top part of the lug and the bottom part of the lug. Is the lug hole center, right? So on this watch specifically, you have the lug hole that is literally in the center of the top part of the lug and the bottom part of the lug, right? So you have a, you have a top, you have bottom, the lug hole is, is in the smack dab center. The other thing that I look at is the lug hole itself, okay? So if the lug itself on the side of the lug, right? The side of the lug, I don't know how you guys are looking at that. Look over here, over here, I don't know. But anyways, um, is the hole itself sharp? Does it look like it's been drilled through the lug or is it dished, right? Is there kind of like an indent in the in the side of the, of the lug hole? What happens is if a polishing wheel hits it, basically grabs all those hard edges and hard corners and sharp angles and basically polishes them out. Um, and then I look at the chamfer. So the chamfer actually starts all the way up here, right? And the chamfer runs down the, the side of that case. Has this watch been worn? Absolutely. If you look at the side of the case, they're swirling on the case, but there's a definitive nice chamfer down the lugs that's very even and very symmetrical. 
The other thing that a lot of people also don't look at is the, the crown guards themselves. There, there's actually, if you look at the crown guard, there's kind of like this line in the crown guard where you see the top of the crown guard, which should be very flat, and then it, it bends over, right? It's where you have kind of like a rounded crown guard, right? So um, it should be very symmetrical and, and geometrically the same. The dial has taken on what we would call like a pumpkin patina. So the dial has kind of like an orangey, like deep like patina to it, which is um, kind of fairly uncommon. Um, there's like all kinds of nicknames and stuff. You could call it a patina dial. You could call it a like, fuck, I don't know. Maybe I'll start calling these things like peanut butter dials. You know, I mean, anything that's tropical, why don't we just call it peanut butter or caramel or whatever? I like the names, don't get me wrong. Um, but the the nickname for a watch that has kind of taken on like a like an orangey kind of like patina is typically pumpkin. So I would say that this is kind of like a pumpkin spice latte. A um, little bit of orange, a little bit of brown in there, a little bit of yellow, really nice and pleasing patina um, within this example. The other thing that I think is kind of interesting is there's been this like big shift to like 5513s and 5512s and you know, no date subs. And I get that, I like that, right? Having that extra dash at the three o'clock position really makes things symmetrical. I think it's a preference. Um, do I have, you know, a preference towards a no date sub versus a sub with date? Eh, I kind of like look at the watch themselves. This is just a really nice example. I love the patina and that's why we're talking about it in, in this week's episode. Um, everything is also very original to the watch. Um, obviously, trip lock crown, which was common in, you know, kind of like 1970, 1971. That's when we see the introduction of the trip lock crown for most, you know, subs. Um, original bezel insert, the bezel, you know, has the correct fonts and is also still pretty black. It's not really faded out. The loom uh, hip or the pearl, as we like to call it, matches the patina on the dial, which is also nice to have. And the date wheel possesses open sixes and nines and it's also a brush metallic date wheel, which is original to the 1680. So it's just a really nice watch. It's very much original. Um, I like 93150 bracelets. Everything from the bracelet to the insert, to the dial, to the date wheel, to the hands, to the finishing on the case. It's just a really nice, you know, example. So that's why we're talking about it. And I don't think that um, white 1680s get a lot of love. I think there's a lot of coolness in this watch. I mean, a red sub is gonna start for like a Mark IV, or Mark V, well above 20,000. I think we've seen white 1680s creep up because reds are becoming kind of unaccessible to, to some people maybe wanting to get their first vintage sub. So I think there's a lot of value and a lot of vibe and coolness in these white subs and we have a good one, so I wanted to talk about it. So in any case, I will provide a link in the description below. This is one definitely worth checking out just as an example of what a watch should look like if it's truly unpolished but worn. Um, and in addition to that, I, I love the patina and the originality of this example. So um, I'll provide a link in the description below so that you guys can check it out. As always, thanks for tuning in, guys. Feel free to like, comment, and smash the subscribe button for us. I, I hear a lot of other YouTubers using that, but like, hey, hit the smash that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified of when we get new, new episodes. That's how YouTubers talk like this. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why, but they do. So whatever. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Check us out on Instagram. Boom, David, put it in right here. Boom, let's see if David can move it around with my hands. How about that, David? Uh, follow us on Instagram if you'd like, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.